In the past, particularly when I was an inexperienced sharpener, the part I used to hate most about getting a new Spyderco was figuring out what I was going to do with this unsharpened section near the Ricasso. I could never understand why they didn't just put a choil in there. And I'm still kind of on the side of thinking it's laziness and just skipping a machining step on their side. Although I've actually grown to like not having a choil in there. There's a few options you have for dealing with this unsharpened section. So this is a, a brand new unsharpened knife. This is one that I've sharpened. So you have the option of just leaving it and not sharpening up to the Ricasso. Or excuse uh, how this one looks, this is my test platform for sharpening. Uh, you also have the option of sharpening all the way up to the Ricasso. Or you have the option of putting in a little choil yourself, which is my least favourite version. Lots of people claim that a sharpening choil is bad for specifically cutting rope, webbing, fabric and straps and stuff like that. And I do actually tend to agree with that. So if we look at this knife here, this is just an MBK uh, iron horse and it's qu quite a deep choil. If you're cutting rope and, you know, it's it, you're, you're going to do a draw cut. So you're probably going to start at the base and it's it's really easy to get that stuck there. So you have to just be aware of not sticking it in the choil to cut. But with the, so this is again the uh, brand new one. Even having the unsharpened section, because it's proud of the apex, even if you put the rope up onto there, it will slide off onto the blade. And having a choil just makes it more difficult to cut. This one's got a very tiny choil, so this one probably won't. Oh yeah, that, that did bind a bit on that. So even with this teeny tiny choil I put in, it uh, it wasn't as proficient at cutting rope, and with a large choil like this one, which is what I see a lot of people put in, it really does make it more difficult. So, I would advise not filing a choil into your knife. But if you did, make sure that when you start with your file or your stone, you're probably going to be using a diamond file or maybe like a Spyderco rod or something. Don't go 90 degrees to the blade straight away because as you push it will chatter and jump down the blade and you'll ruin it. So you want to start um, at like a, quite an acute angle and just file in slowly, probably on both sides, and then slowly work that file to be more and more um, towards 90 degrees. That's your best way of doing it, but I would advise not putting a choil in a Spyderco knife. Aesthetically, I think I prefer going all the way up to the Ricasso. However, sharpening up to the Ricasso is kind of a pain for a couple of reasons. If you're sharpening freehand and you want to go up all the way to the Ricasso, that's going to involve you having your blade uh, 90 degrees to the stone. And the issue with this is the only contact which is stopping the blade from rocking uh, backwards and forwards as you accelerate and decelerate the blade up and down the stone is just the, the tiny bit of bevel that is touching the stone. So it, you need to hold your knife 90 degrees to the stone and you're much more likely to convex your blade this way. But if you leave that notch in and you try and make your knife as parallel as you can so this being parallel parallel as parallel as you can with the stone the there's much more contact area in the direction of the acceleration so holding it like this makes you less likely to convex the blade than if you held it like this and initially i was worried about this kind of this sharp section hitting into the corner of my stone and kind of gouging it but the, at the plunge line, the Ricasso is thick and dull, and you use that as a stop. So 
there is no sharp bit that bangs into the side of your stone. So I kind of just pick an angle that's going to get close enough for me. And, and then that's how I sharpen. And you can see how that matches up there. So it's much easier to sharpen these knives if you just forget about the troil entirely. And you don't try and go all the way up to the ricasso. And you just leave that unsharpened section as it is. It seems it seems really obvious to do that, and I just never I never did it. I always went for a troil or flush to the ricasso. I think flush to the ricasso does look aesthetically better, and maybe if I had like a display piece, I might do that. But all my knives are just workhorses and toys for sharpening, so. I think I'm just going to continue sharpening it, lazy mode, going uh, as close to the castle as I can get without having to take my knife 90 degrees to the stone. I really strongly advise against putting a troil in it. I think it kind of it's, just doesn't look very good and it decreases your performance in cutting webbing and stuff. It's just not necessary.